Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. You've got your daily Bible reading for January 2nd, looking at the second portion of Luke, chapter 9. About eight days after he said these words, Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothing became dazzlingly white. Just then two men, Moses and Elijah, were talking with him. They appeared in glory, and were talking about his departure, which he was going to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. Peter and those with him were weighed down with sleep, but when they were completely awake they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let's make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not realize what he was saying. While he was saying these things, a cloud came over and overshadowed them. They were afraid as they went into the cloud. Then a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, they found Jesus alone. They kept this secret and told no one in those days any of those things that they had seen. The next day, after they had come down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd called out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son because he is my only child. See, a spirit takes hold of him and suddenly he screams. Then it throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. It hardly ever leaves him and constantly tortures him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, O unbelieving and perverse generation, how long will I be with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. As the boy was approaching, the demon threw him down and shook him with convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. They were all astonished at the majesty of God. While everyone was amazed at all these things that Jesus was doing, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears, and remember this, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand what he was saying. It was hidden from them, so that they did not grasp it, and they were afraid to ask him about this statement. An argument started among them about which of them would be the greatest. Since Jesus knew the thoughts of their hearts, he took a little child and had him stand next to him. Then he said to them, Whoever receives this little child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. In fact, the one who is least among all of you is the one who is great. John said in reply, Master, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he is not following you along with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not try to stop him, because whoever is not against you is for you. When the days were approaching for him to be taken up, Jesus was determined to go to Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead of him. They went and entered a Samaritan village to make preparations for him. But the people did not welcome him, because he was determined to go to Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to call on fire from heaven to consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. You don't know what kind of spirit is influencing you. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy people's souls, but to save them. Then they went to another village. As they went on the way, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus told him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another man also said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say goodbye to those at home. Jesus told him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of our God. Luke chapter 9, continuing on the theme of what does the ruling activity of Jesus Christ look like? What does the kingdom of Christ really look like? 
And Jesus makes it clear with this transfiguration as he's up on this mountain, uh, perhaps Mount Hermon at the very northern edge of Galilee. Um, it's even, its heights are snow covered during most of the year. So if, if they're on Mount Hermon, they probably didn't go all the way to the top, um, but up on a mountainside. But anyway, Jesus makes it clear that he is God. And he's talking with Moses and Elijah about his impending departure. Um, and with, with Peter and James and John along with him. Um, so they see this. And they see the power that Jesus has. They see the glory that is his, that he has kept hidden from them. Um, the glory of the Son of, Son of God. And you would think that they would get it. But they don't. <laughs> But that's just kind of the nature of things. There on the mountain, Peter suggests, let us build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not realize what he was saying. The idea that they would like to stay there, and the idea that here, here they see the glory of God, and it's a nice place to be because it's, it's removed from all the pain and suffering of, of down, down below, down on the plain. But the moment soon passes after God the Father speaks from the cloud. They found Jesus alone, and they kept it to themselves. But then we see how the ruling activity of Christ plays out, and what does it actually look like? Demons possessing people, and Jesus drives it out. O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and came back to his father. Jesus has the power and authority. Then Jesus predicts his death and resurrection that he would be betrayed, <laughs> which doesn't make sense. Why would, why would God, who has all power, who can drive out demons, who just was up on the mountain the previous day demonstrating his glory, why would he be betrayed, and why would he be killed? And you can understand why the disciples don't get it, um, partly because it's, it's hidden from them, and partly because it's just a concept that totally goes against their understanding of Jesus. But again, they don't get it. The very next conversation, as they're walking, and Jesus says, Oh, by the way, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to, I'm going to die and rise. And the very next thing that happens is they're arguing about who is the greatest. And you can see how that one played out. Peter, James, and John um, keeping the details about transfiguration to themselves. But maybe they let it go to their heads anyway. John saying, Well, I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm his closest friend. Peter saying, well, have you guys walked on water? And others saying, well, Andrew saying, I was one of the first disciples. Philip saying, he called me a, a true Israelite. Or maybe it was Nathaniel. At any rate, you could see the divisions among them where they all have the same access to God. And yet when they look around, they feel like that's not enough. And they need to find some way to draw divisions among themselves so that they can assert their own authority or their own superiority over against the others. And Jesus says, friends, you don't get it. The ruling activity of Christ is not found in glory. John even goes on to say, well, we saw someone driving out demons and, and we tried to stop him. And Jesus again says, the ruling activity of Christ is not found in glory. And it's not found as though you've got the treasure for you to dole out as you wish. The ruling activity of Christ is to bring Jesus glory. And so he goes up to Jerusalem. He calls people to follow him. And the following him might not look like a whole lot in this side of heaven. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. But the following Jesus and the seeing and witnessing the ruling activity of Christ is, is a blessing in and of itself. A blessing that, that demonstrates that Jesus is the, is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, 
with all authority and all power. And yet, and yet he chose to go to the cross for you and for me. So this is a rather large topic. Um, we call it the theology of the cross. And I think Saturday's episode is going to talk about it a little bit more. Because it's a topic that we have to understand. What does the ruling activity of Christ look like? What does success as a congregation, as a church, as a church body look like? And it's easy to get caught up with the wrong, wrong idea. And to get caught up in all the numbers and all the measurements. And to miss, to miss what Jesus has promised to do. And where Jesus has promised to bless his people. Anyway, you can find us Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. 2250 South Holland Savannah Road, or check us out on Instagram at Raise with Jesus. God bless your day.